Hi and welcome back to another Girl Gone London video. My name is Kaylin and I'm a dual UK and American citizen and today we're getting cheesy. Literally, we are talking about cheese. And not just about cheese, but about the differences between UK and US cheese and what we use it on and how it's processed and what flavors we enjoy. A lot of you requested this after my potatoes and butter video and as someone put it, keep going until we have all of the ingredients for a jacket potato. Now before I educate you on this genuinely fascinating topic, please be patient because I did want to mention a couple of ways you could help support the channel if you're finding these neat these niche topics, couldn't decide between niche or niche there, interesting. First option, leave a comment, completely free, helps tell YouTube you like the video, and unless you're mean, I'll probably respond. Second option, subscribe, also completely free, and helps tell YouTube you like the channel, and you don't even have to interact with me if you don't want to. Thirdly, buy me a coffee, which isn't really a coffee, but rather a small one-time donation to the channel through the link I've put in the description, which is not free, but does go towards things like editing programs and hopefully some lighting equipment so I can spend more time on YouTube videos and less time selling my body to science or however else I can think of to make money that day. Okay, we cheddar get going. <laughs> okay, I can't. You guys, I'm sorry I tried with the puns, I'm gonna leave that to you. You take care of the puns in the comments and I will take care of an educational video about cheese so we can all stick with what we're good at because that is, that's not me. Okay, first, some definitions. When I talk about American cheese in the video for now, we're just talking about all the types of cheese made in America and considered American. We are not talking about the American cheese that you're thinking of, which yes, isn't really cheese, and we will address that later in the video. Okay, difference number one between American cheese and British cheese is the culture surrounding it. Now, I'm not saying Americans don't enjoy cheese, but Brits love cheese. Maybe not as much as the French, but a whole lot. My evidence is from my own experience, of course no citation needed, um, but also from a story I found of a US citizen who went to a meeting in the UK for work. They state, I was in an all hands meeting with the US and UK branches of our company and we had an icebreaker question where we shared what our first job was. When I mentioned I was once a cheesemonger, the UK employees enthusiastically started sharing how much they love cheese, favorite cheeses, dislike cheeses, etc. They even asked questions about the job and I ended up talking about the big cheese manual we had for recommending pairings. Their reaction was surprising because they're usually pretty reticent and stoic during these things. Anyway, it caught me off guard and I just wanted to know if British people in general have a passion for cheese? And the answer is yes, in my experience, British people love cheese and Americans are a fan of cheese, but not like that. Now, difference number two is the difference in where cheese fits into a meal. Typically in the UK, a cheese board can often be for after a meal. You would either order it at a restaurant or put a plate of cheese out afterwards when entertaining in your home to be sort of the finisher to the meal. In the US, cheese boards after a meal are not really a thing. If we do enjoy a platter of cheese or cheese and crackers, we would typically enjoy it before the meal. And that would mostly be if you were entertaining people at your house rather than what you would order at a restaurant. Difference three are the types of cheeses that are considered the favorites in each country. In America, the top list consists of cheddar cheese, American cheese, mozzarella, Swiss, Colby Jack or Monterey Jack, provolone, Munster, blue cheese, and brie. In the UK, it varies by region, but you've got cheddar, Red Leicester, Stilton, mozzarella, Wensleydale, Brie, and double Gloucester. Please tell me that you pronounce it Gloucester because I know that's how you do it in other contexts, but it can get tricky sometimes with British English um, place and cheese names. I think it's double Gloucester. There are over 750 cheeses produced in the UK today and just about 600 in the US. So safe to say the UK produces more types of cheese than the US and also safe to say we will not be going into detail of each cheese type because I'm sorry to disappoint, but this is not a cheese channel. However, leave your favorite cheese in the comments because obviously this is an important discussion that needs to be had. Now let's move on to cheddar cheese. 
I've given up on the numbering system now. Um, if you didn't know, cheddar cheese originates from cheddar, a community in Somerset, England, with gorges and caves that farmers use to keep milk cool. The myth about cheddar cheese is that it came about because a milkmaid forgot about a pail of milk in one of the caves, and when she came back, boom. Best invention ever, cheddar cheese. Take that, Robert Gare. To understand this reference, please watch my video on cardboard. So of course, then people start loving cheddar. King Henry II bought like 10,000 pounds of cheddar in the year 1170 because why not? Uh, Queen Victoria received a giant wheel of cheddar that weighed more than half a ton as a wedding gift because nothing says congratulations in England like a wheel of cheese, clearly. Now, unlike some other cheeses and food products, cheddar cheese can be made anywhere in the world. It does not have to come from cheddar to be considered cheddar cheese. And when these British colonists came over to America, they made sure to pack their clothes, their kids, and of course, their cheddar making techniques. Because of this, America got in on the cheddar making processes early on in the country's history, but it wasn't until 1851 when the US made its biggest contribution to worldwide cheese consumption by opening up the first cheese factory in upstate New York. Before that, cheese making had been a farm process, but now it could also be a factory process capable of producing so much more cheese than before. Now, when it comes to the cheese making process, typically American made cheeses are more mild than British cheeses, partly due to this process. For instance, it's more common in England for cheeses to be cloth bound and open air or cave aged, while many American cheeses are vacuum sealed to age, which produces a more mild flavor. And then you have the fact that cheese needs milk from cows. And as we talked about in our video on butter, cows in the UK are often grass fed, whereas US cows are often grain fed. What goes into your cow affects what comes out of your cow and into your cheese. Also, I feel like what goes into your cow is what comes out of your cow is like a good title for a book or something I need to write. Anyway, I do wanna mention here that obviously there are more local cheeses and artisan cheeses made in the US. You've got like Vermont cheddar, Hudson Valley camembert, beehive cheddar from Utah. These will more closely resemble the British bar for a great block of cheese and some have won worldwide awards. It's just that in the comparison we're making in this video, we're talking about more mass produced cheeses. Now, where is cheese made? Most UK made cheeses come from the Western counties as the West of Britain receives more rain than the East, making it good for dairy production. In the US, Wisconsin is still the main producer of cheese within the country with California being a close second. Another difference in UK versus US cheese is the taste of the consumers of said cheese. There's no point in big US cheese makers making extremely sharp or aged or smelly cheeses if the market doesn't demand it, and on the whole, the American market doesn't. American tastes tend to prefer more mild and creamier cheeses with less specific flavors, while British consumers, again, are arguably, and in my opinion, just factually into more intensely flavored cheese that is typically sharper and less mild. You could say this is because American palates are less advanced than the Brits when it comes to cheese, um, and that maybe if they were exposed to British cheeses consistently, they would then demand those, but as with everything on this channel, we have to take a look at the whole picture. So let's talk about how we use cheese in each country. As mentioned, typically cheese in the UK is enjoyed on its own. Literally picking up a chunk of cheese or slicing some off and eating that cheese, savoring the flavor, maybe on a cracker, possibly not. Of course, cheeses used in other recipes, as we know, but even when paired with other food, the taste of the cheese is special and is the accent flavor or the entire flavor. In America, even though we don't talk about and aren't as interested in being cheese connoisseurs as many Brits, we do like cheese, particularly when it's kind of smothered over everything from macaroni and cheese to cheese fries to cheese steaks to grilled cheese to nachos dripping with cheese to pizza with extra cheese, we're all about the quantity over the quality of cheese. And in that way, having a more mild flavor actually tends to work better and be less overwhelming. And again, you can turn your nose up at general American cheeses and say you would never eat a single piece of cheese that wasn't properly aged in a cave in the middle of nowhere. 
But the American chowing down on their cheesesteak isn't really bothered that there are more intensely flavored and sharper and arguably better tasting cheeses across the pond. Another interesting way that the Americans eat cheese is local to Wisconsin and the Midwest, with Wisconsin being the cheese state. That's known as the cheese curd, which is a snackable, bite-sized chunk of completely unaged cheese, breaded and deep fried. It's basically baby cheddar, best eaten when the cheese is a day old, and they're extremely popular in this part of the country. Now, throughout this video, as I said at the start, I've used the phrase American cheese to refer to American-made cheese. Cheddar, Swiss, provolone, Colby Jack, whatever. Not what is often thought of as American cheese because that deserves its own call out happening right now. Let's discuss it because people have opinions and you may have started this video being like, ew, why do Americans eat this plastic looking thing you can't even call cheese? And to be honest, you might finish this video thinking the exact same thing, but I'm here to see if we can spread some light on this American classic. So firstly, here's what American cheese is. And it is absolutely true that according to the FBI, the, F, the FBI, the FDA, the FBI don't think cares about cheese as much. Um, according to the FDA, it is not actually fully cheese. It's called pasteurized process American cheese. It's made by mixing cheeses like cheddar typically with preservatives like sodium citrate to create a cheese with a longer shelf life. And actually, fun fact, it didn't even start in the US. The original experiment with cheese and sodium citrate, or citrate, citrate, this is not a chemistry channel, began in Switzerland in 1922 using Emmental. This was a means to try and make a cheese to export that had a longer shelf life. The process was then patented by a man named James Kraft, who, yes, is the Kraft of Kraft, whose goal it was to create a cheddar that was a shelf-stable product that could be stored with a longer shelf life. You may ask why that was even necessary, but it certainly came in handy during the World Wars when American cheese became a fantastic option to send to troops stationed overseas. So, okay, we have this cheese that lasts longer because we've added some chemicals to it and processed it in a different way to normal cheese. But is there a point besides making it last longer? Actually, American cheese is different from many other cheeses in that the processing leads it to having a very stable form when melting. It has a very velvety texture without greasiness and it stays gooey and soft. As a chef wrote in an article on SeriousEats.com, no other cheese in the world can touch its meltability or goo factor. And that's what it's really there for, texture. If I've taken the time to select and grind some great beef, I want that beef flavor to shine, not get covered up by a powerful cheese that would fare better on a cheese plate. Whether you agree or disagree, no one is suggesting that you put American cheese on a cheese plate or use it for much more than throwing a cheese slice at the kids on the way home from school or putting it in a mac and cheese or grilled cheese or queso. And I think many Americans themselves would agree with that stance and would not claim that American cheese is a superior cheese or is the world's best tasting cheese or is even cheese. It just serves a purpose. Then of course you've got things like cheese whiz and the cheese powder and Kraft macaroni and cheese that is so far processed, there's nothing really cheesy about it and I can't really defend those. Now can you find American cheese in the UK or vice versa? I feel my British audience are sitting at their computers right now breathing a sigh of relief that American made cheeses are not popular with British grocery stores. You can find a couple, but with so many great British cheeses, they are not looking to import American cheeses in bulk anytime soon and are quite happy to let the Americans have them. However, for Americans watching who haven't seen inside a UK grocery store, you should know that they do sell what are typically called something like cheesy singles in most stores in the UK. These are cheese slices with the same consistency as American cheese and are specifically typically sold for burgers. Now, many American grocery stores do have more international cheese sections, and you can find many British cheeses in many American grocery stores, as they are popular for the more cheese and crackers type of dinner party crowd. They will be more expensive and might not be in a standard grocery store in the middle of rural Oklahoma, but definitely around the country, there will be specialty areas within grocery stores to get your fix of some British cheeses if that's what you're looking for. Now, I feel like we've been through a lot together in this video already, and I feel like honestly, I could make a part two of this video very easily, covering even more cheese differences to help us see how the two countries eat and make and use cheese differently. 
um, because safe to say it's pretty different. There are a lot of funny threads online with Americans like discovering British cheese and how amazing it is and wondering what they've been missing out on. So it's clear that the winner overall when it comes to cheese quality has to go to the Brits, no questions asked. But I hope in exploring some of the American cheese comparisons, you've come to learn a bit more about American cheeses and the culture surrounding cheese there because as with many things we uncover on this channel, usually there are reasons why things are the way they are and understanding this nuance is one of the first steps in understanding why Americans are putting this floppy, mild tasting, not really cheese cheese on their sandwiches and enjoying it. And if you want my personal opinion as someone who has lived in both the UK and the US for long periods of time, I'm a huge fan of British cheddar, but if you want me to make a grilled cheese sandwich, I am 100% using a fake cheese slice every single time and I will not apologize. Now, I fully expect the comment section to completely implode with all things cheese. So enjoy, let me know what you think, and thanks so much for watching. See you next time.